Hello again, I'm Blunty, and the nifty gizmo on my review table today is called the Zytilus, which, if I'm honest, is a stupid name and a phonetic catastrophe. However, a rose by any other name would still attract bees, and Zytilus, or possibly Zytilus, by any other name would still be a rather interesting approach to equipping your iPhone with accessory lenses. It's a system comprised of a case, which itself is quite sturdy and robust. Perhaps slightly bulkier than I usually like my cases, but it does lock onto the phone so there's just no way it'll ever come loose accidentally, and when you're using your phone as a camera, a little extra bulk to grip onto is actually a good thing, really. It also has a little flappy door at the bottom, which protects the charger port, I suppose, but it also directs the speakers forward, which is kind of neat. The depth of this recess, though, does pose the problem of making it more difficult to plug in headphones. But the Zytilus people realise this, and they give you a little slim extension jumper cord to solve that problem for you. It's not the most elegant way around the issue, but it works perfectly well. The case even has a place to thread a wrist leash strap through, which is handy to keep things nice and secure when you're on a photo walk and your phone needs to stay at the ready in your hand instead of going back into your pocket. The case itself has a nice positive grippy feeling and it has a flip out kickstand which can also be handy. But when it's photo and video time, dislodge that kickstand from its bayoneted socket and lock in the revolving lens wheel in its place and you've suddenly got four different lens options to play with. Well, technically three lenses and a filter. There's a wide angle lens, which itself unscrews to reveal an extreme close up macro lens. There's a fisheye lens and there's even a circular polarizer filter for cutting through glare and reflections. Each one simply flips out from its protected little home in the wheel and clips securely into place in the housing on the case itself which means that no light can leak behind the lens and wash out your photos, and it also ensures a perfect lens alignment every single time. And that makes life nice and easy. But all of this is, well, meaningless if the images sucked through these lenses are crap. So we better take a look at that. So firstly, let's look at the difference in field of view. Here's the iPhone's own lens. Here is the Z Tylus's wide-angle lens and the fisheye lens. As you can see, a useful difference between all three, giving you some good options for flexing your creativity. Now then, this is the regular wide-angle lens, not quite held at full arm's length. I've got my arm sort of bent here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this makes it much easier to get uh, this two video stuff doing it handheld because, of course, the iPhone in the video mode crops in, so it's even a little bit tighter than usual, which makes it a bit hard to get, you know, nice, relaxed-looking framing without being sort of too close and too uptight about it, or to get other people in the shop with you and stuff like that. I was a bit worried about the case uh, because it is designed in such a way that it sort of cups away the bottom end of the microphone facing backwards, you know, the, the screen side and the top end where there's another mic that's usually used for, um, uh, uh, I blanked on the word, noise reduction. <laughs> so I was a bit worried about the sound quality, but as you can hear, obviously it sounds just fine. So those worries were uh, uh, pushed by the wayside. That's not the phrase I was looking for. My brain's not working too well with the things that you speak to make people understand the thoughts that are coming out of your head. Words! Today. Now, when it comes to affecting the image quality, I saw no significant loss in sharpness for the most part. Of course, it's the nature of wide-angle and fisheye lenses like these to get softer and a bit distorted towards the edges, so it's not shocking to see that happen here. But on the whole, it's not too severe. And through the centre of the frame, sharpness and contrast were maintained very nicely indeed. Interestingly, the lenses did seem to affect the iPhone's white balance. I repeatedly saw the image from the wide-angle and fisheye lenses come out just a bit on the cool side compared to the iPhone's own natural tendency towards slightly warm tones. This is the first time I've ever seen this kind of behaviour with these clip-on style lenses. I'm not sure what's going on here. But as unexpected as it is, it is easy enough to correct for with a quick swipe or two in Snapseed or any other decent image editing app, so I'm not really worried about it. At the very edges of the fisheye lens, you'll see the usual distortions and chromatic bleeding. Again, it's to be expected with this kind of add-on fisheye lens. Much harder to correct for in editing, but most will consider the effect part of the charm of the barreled fisheye images anyway. 
In video mode, thanks to the slight crop the iPhone has when switching to video, much of the fisheye barreling is cut off. But the image stabilization in the iPhone's video mode will give you some odd shifting of the vignetting that does remain. Though this can be easily avoided by using an alternative video camera app that allows you to turn the stabilization off, like Filmic Pro for instance. You don't really need stabilization when working with a fisheye lens anyway. The circular polarizer is super handy too, and something that almost all of the other iPhone clip-on lens gadgets thingies lack. It's easiest to show the effect in video, but most useful for photos. The polarizer, very briefly if you are unfamiliar with them, allows you to cut through nasty glare and reflections and score more detail and more intense colors in your shots. Now, that macro lens hiding under the wide-angle lens. I have to say, it's a bit fiddly to unscrew the wide-angle lens and indeed to reattach it, thanks in large part to the collar that almost completely surrounds the edge of the wide-angle lens you have to screw off. You don't have much to grab onto. But when you do reveal the macro lens, it's quite fun. There's quite a lot of distortion all over the edges, but in the center you can get very, very close and pull in lots of crispy detail. By way of comparison, here is as close as I can get to these little pebbles with the normal iPhone macro focus mode, and here is how close I can get with the Zotilus's macro lens. It's a massive difference, and it opens up a whole new whack of possibilities, though you do have to get very physically close to your subject to focus, so best for still objects rather than, say, insect macro photography, for instance. I'm less impressed with the macro than the other lenses on offer here, but it is nice to have it anyway, and it can deliver some quite lovely and dreamy shots if you select your subjects carefully. So on the device as a whole, I like that the lenses are completely protected when not in use, without having to keep track of those tiny little plastic lens caps which are just all too easy to lose. I also like how fast and easy it is to switch to an alternative lens at any time, or just flip the lens you're using out of the way to reveal the normal lens. I like the grippy secure feeling case with the options for wrist strap attachment, and I like the clever detachable bayonet mounted lens barrel thingy, which actually leaves the door open to alternative lens collections to be swapped in. Perhaps they'll make one with some telephoto and dedicated macro lenses in them, or one with colored filters for black and white work. I know how weird that sounds if you're not into photography. Coloured filters for black and white work. You're crazy. It's, it's insane. But trust me, it's a very useful thing. <laughs> but it's all very tantalising if these Zotilus folk really get running with the whole concept. So, all in all, I think I'll be making the Zotilus my new go-to option for when I'm out on dedicated iPhone photography photo walks. For day-to-day -day use, the case is just a bit too bulky for me, even though the kickstand is very handy. But yeah, for when I'm in the mood for some iPhoneography, I'll be popping on the Zotilus and heading out into the world very happily. It's a pretty nicely thought out bit of kit, and hopefully thanks to the separation of the case from the lens mount, I'll be reasonably future-proofed for when I move on to a new model of iPhone, which is an issue I've had with some other clip-on lenses I've used. They're made to clip onto one specific model of iPhone, and if anything changes at all about the size or shape, they're useless, you have to throw them away. Not this time though. Here, there's the possibility of keeping your lenses and just replacing the case, and I like that. I just hope these Zotilus people are quick enough in getting a new case ready for when that inevitably happens. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.